All right, so here's a project that I've had a few people ask or request me to do. Um, this is a back curtain on a carver. It's pretty huge. Um, the boat, I think, is like 58 foot long. And the canvas components on the bottom of it um, are just, they're big and they're funky and that one's long and that one actually makes a doorway on that side. So what I've got so far is the pattern worked out, the zippers worked out, the clear is already cut. And what we're going to do is put a, uh, put a U zip in that panel and then do all the canvas components, all the borders, the top sides and the bottoms on all three of these things. And I'm, I'm not going to zoom in. I'm just going to leave the camera back there. Sometimes I think that works a little bit better. If you, if you need to see the details, there are other videos for details. But this is just going to be like an overview of how to, how to tackle these big, uh, big panels like this. So um, I'm going to get teed up and we'll start with getting that U-zip in first. And I'll, I'll kind of walk you through and talk you through this stuff. But again, I'm not going to be zooming in, getting close-ups on this. So I'm going to keep this, this camera angle right here. Uh, for, for the main reason is I'm kind of in a hurry. This is actually a job that we're getting on a deadline for. And uh, I don't have really time to be going back and forth with the camera today. So um, with no further to do, let's get going. All right, so I lied. <clears throat> I went back and looked at that intro thing that I just filmed right there. And uh, that was just a really bad angle. You couldn't see anything. So let me move this out of the way. Can you see the, I've got the outline marked out in black and then I've got the cut line for the clear in red here. So this, this piece of clear is cut to the red line. Um, first thing I need to do, because of our component pieces, we're gonna have a one and a half inch finish on the top and the sides. And the bottom of course is gonna be whatever this distance is. Um, but <clears throat> I want the canvas to overlap this clear by one half of an inch. So I've got my scribe tool set for one half inch and I'm just going to go around this thing and I'm going to border it so I have a place to put my fabric. I have a straight edge for my fabric on there so let me turn it around. This is probably not going to come in really clear. Um, but all it is is just a white line that's so and then with these grease pencils what I do is I just have kind of a pile of them that are sharpened and I uh, I just change them out and then I go sharpen all of them at one time so now that we've got that um, our U zip is pretty basic right I just want it two inches from the side now if you notice I'm going to have it this U-zip's going to roll up, right? So I'm upside down on it right now. Put another two inch hash mark at the bottom of this. All right, so I lied. <clears throat> I went back and looked at that intro thing that I just filmed right there. And uh, that was just a really bad angle. You couldn't see anything. So let me move this out of the way. Can you see the, I've got the outline marked out in black and then I've got the cut line for the clear in red. Here. So this, this piece of clear is cut to the red line. Um, first thing I need to do, because of our component pieces, we're going to have a one and a half inch finish on the top and the sides. And the bottom, of course, is going to be whatever this distance is. Um, but <clears throat> I want the canvas to overlap this clear by one half of an inch. So I've got my scribe tool set for one half inch. And I'm just going to go around this thing and I'm going to border it so I have a place to put my fabric. I have a straight edge for my fabric on there, so let me turn it around. This is probably not going to come in really clear, um, but all it is is just a white line that's... So and then with these grease pencils, what I do is I just have kind of a pile of them that are sharpened. And I, uh, I just change them out and then I go sharpen all of them at one time. So now that we've got that, um, our U-zip is pretty basic, right? I just want it two inches from the side. Now, if you notice, I'm going to have it, this U-zip is going to roll up, right? So I'm upside down on it right now. Put another two inch hash mark at the bottom of this. And then I take a, uh, just a piece of rope. Just a piece of rope with a 
loop tied in it and an ideal radius for a number 10 coil zipper is 16 inches. It always works really good when you got a big piece like this because you can actually do a 16 inch radius. And I'm just going to use it as a compass here. Draw these lines in. If you've got it lined up, you just draw it. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to take some quarter inch basting tape. Then we take our zipper, which is all the way over here. What I'm gonna do is just walk the zipper around it, right, and get the length. Leave yourself a couple of extra inches on each side. And now then we can take, now this zipper is directional, so be careful of that, right? And I'm just going to put a piece of, ba piece of basting tape on one side of it. Then I'm going to base the side that doesn't have the tape down right on that line that we just scribed in. Notice I'm getting my head right over the top of this, which you're probably looking at the top of my, no you're not, I don't know. Okay, now you go ahead and stick the other side down as well. Now I'm going to peel this tape off all the way around. Oh shit. I haven't done that in, I haven't done that in a hundred years. Wow. I just sewed right through my pattern. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. Maybe it's because I haven't filmed any videos in a long time. All right, so, I mean, obviously the pattern's here for keeping this protected so it doesn't scratch, right? So that's why we kind of slide it around on there. So I'm just kind of, you gotta just kind of take the weight, you know, pick the weight up with your left hand. I'm going to kind of just sew the inside and I'm going to sew the outside of this. So let's go cut it out. All right, so now that I've got that stitched down, I can come in here 
and I'm going to uh, cut it out um, three quarters of the way, right? So I want this, I want the long flange to cover over the top of the zipper. Then we're also going to stick some binding on this too um, to help keep some of the water out from the U-zip. There's a lot of ways to do this. Um, I seem to, I, I, I'm going to my go-to kind of way to do it. When it comes to zippers and zippers leaking and stuff like that, um, I, it's a, in, in my 30 years experience, my best advice to you is to tell your customer up front that these zippers are going to leak. That way they're not expecting them not to. If they don't, great. But if they do, they were worn. So just separate it right there. And now we'll put this into the side. I'm gonna take this back to the machine and I'm gonna put some binding right on this cut edge all the way around, clean that up. All right, so I have my binding attachment teed up here. And um, I just use, it's just a three quarter inch binding, uh, double fold binding with three quarter inch binder. I don't have any type of attachment. I like just a straight binder that you actually screw onto the machine. That way I can adjust it each and every time I put it on there. It only takes a second to do it. So this, is, this can be a little tricky because of the weight of these big panels. So you just wanna make sure that you The, the hard part about doing outside radius is that you're, you're making a transition right at the tangent point of the line where the line meets the curve right there. That's, that's where people tend to miss because you're going from circle to straight line all of a sudden. So just be aware of that when you're trying to bind. If you're missing all the time, I and mean, binding's a pain in the butt, but, but you know, it is what it is. So, okay, so now that we've got that on there, let's go back over and we'll zip it together. And, uh, other than putting some roll-up straps on that, um, we're done with the U-zip, so we'll start with the component pieces. All right, so now I've got my slides, and here's why we mark this. I'm gonna take the side of the mark on it, stick it in my slider, and make sure that when I push these together, that that, <clears throat> that's, that tooth on that side is the outside leading one. And one tooth off there. Right, there it is right there, so I just made that look a lot easier than it actually is, trust me. So I'm going to take that one, that side, and that one hit on the first time, so there you go. All right, so now we can go ahead and just, if I have my scissors, now we can go ahead and Cut those off to length. Just like that. And, all right, let me figure out some fabric real quick. All right, so let's start with the bottom of this thing. What I'm gonna do is I've got, you probably can't see it again from over there, but I've got my snap marks on this clear. So I'm gonna cut this clear off about an inch below the snaps all the way around and uh, this line, the cut line for the clear is straight, straight across here, but there's some crown to the boat or on the snap line, there's some crown. So this side over here is nine and a half inches where this side here is eight inches. So it's not just a straight component piece that you could measure out and, and sew on there. So what we're going to do is 
Uh, the other thing too is obviously this is wider than 60 inches, so I'm going to have to go against the grain or with the grain of the fabric to get it so that there's no seams in there. I don't really like to do that a lot of times because that's the stretchy part of the fabric. Um, we want to have it, <clears throat> that's, that's exactly, or a little bit more than six feet, a little bit less than six feet. Um, so nonetheless, I'm going to stretch this fabric out uh, with the grain. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece off that's bigger than we actually use. And then on the inside of it, we're going to make a two inch, a two inch piece that hides the seam on the inside. And then we'll put the pattern, once we get that stitch on there, we'll put the pattern on top of that once it's made and then scribe out the bottom of the, the cut. So let me. So this is actually a piece that has a seized edge in it. Get pencil here. And let's just mark out about what we need. And we said that was that was nine and a half. Let's let's do let's do a 12 inch piece. Let's do a 12 inch piece for to compensate for our fold over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that as our cutoff line, and then down here where the seized edge is, I'm going to do a two inch a two inch line for a fold over, right? <clears throat> okay, so straight away we know that we're going to need, to make a two inch piece, I'm going to take a four inch, a four inch piece of fabric. So my two inch ruler, I'll scribe a line, put it right on top of there. That way I've got a line to fold into. Alright, so now I'm going to take my clamp and my ruler and I want to fold and I want to crease. I want to crease the stuff so it'll stay in position for me when I go to sew it. So I'm just folding this right over to that line to make a one inch fold over with a crease in it. And then on this piece we need to fold both sides in one inch. <clears throat> Some people say they can do this without putting a crease in it, but man it sure is a lot easier if you have a crease to, to fold to sew on. All right, so let's do this. So we're looking at the inside of this right now. I can take some basting tape. Now in that white line that we scribed on there, one half inch up, that's what I'm using as a reference to apply this on the inside. Okay, so now we can flip this over. And then base this side, which is the outside.
Now I'm doing two things. I'm looking at that reference line, but I'm also looking at the the fabric on the end that we folded on the inside of it to stack these on top, right on top of each other. So when you sew it, you're not messing, right? Okay, so I should have pulled this off of my pattern before. There we go. All right, so let's go to the machine. So again, just be careful with the weight. You know, it's, this is all about just being careful. And sewing nice and steady. I can actually feel the folds with my hands. So now that's secured. Static on that. I can flip this panel over and then I can come back and I can fold this side up. Right now we've got two inches and we'll stitch this down. Okay, nice and clean, right? All right, so now let's just leave it. We want to leave it like that. How do we want to do it? Let me put it back up here. Let's see what we got going on. Okay, let's leave it like that. Let's just pull our pattern out. Put our pattern on top of it again. Now we've got really good references, right? Which means exact red lines that we're gonna line this clear up to. All right, that's it right there. So now I can take my pencil and I can come back down and there's a cutout here that was for a, uh, a piece of the back deck that came up that we need to go around but I can just put reference lines here like this basically it's about an inch below the snaps so that gives us our bottom reference which is the right way so now let's put the pattern back on there I can use a straight edge right on the edge of my clear here to get the verticals, right? Ah, come on. All right, so now, now the bottom component piece is done, what we'll do is we'll come back before we bind the bottom of this, we'll put our, ref, our uh, reinforcement on there for the snap line. So let's, let's flip it right around now and go ahead and do this top piece since we've got this here. And we're gonna have to use, I don't know if there's enough of this. Is there enough of this? Maybe, maybe not. I've got another piece. This, these were the, the bimini top, like I told you, was really wide. So these were the cutoffs from the bimini top.
If I turn it that oh, okay, yeah, we got enough. No, we don't. Maybe, maybe not. I can get one piece out of it for sure. So let's, all right, so uh, again, just to reiterate, the component piece on the top is going to be one and a half inches finished. So I need to have my scribe tool set at one inch because from the edge of the clear up is going to be one inch. The bottom is going to be the half over. So make sure that you've got enough fabric on there. What you do is you just draw in your cut line. So that are, <clears throat> if you've never seen this before, we have every line that we draw on here has got a name. That line right there that I just drew is called the fold line for a reason, because we uh, fold that line, <laughs> right? All right, so let me, let me drop a little bit of weight on this so it doesn't move on us. And then I'm just gonna come through here and I'm gonna scribe this radius in at one inch with the scribe tool. Now I'm gonna put what we call reference lines on the side. So we've got our fold line, our, fi our uh, finish line, fold line and our finish line. These are our reference lines. And then I'm gonna move this out of the way and I want a cut line, which is one inch above that that we have something to fold over for the fold line. All right, so again, and again, we're doing the inside piece, right? So you're gonna do this two times, inside and outside. But the inside piece, you go ahead and cut the finish line off. Now on the outside piece, we won't even have this finish line because we've already got it once right here. And I'll show you why. Now I come up here and I cut my cut line, which is an inch above my fold line. So if you're wondering about this just being such a slight radius, I can assure you that if you make, if you make this a straight component piece and sew it on there, um, you won't be able to do the tensioning with the zipper properly and you'll have wrinkles in it. I just don't think that's enough. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna risk it. Let me grab another piece here. Okay, so let me set my inside piece down, grab another piece, another bimini cut off. How do I want it? I want it like that. <clears throat> okay, you have to remember to you have to remember to flip this over because now we're going to do our outside. You're looking at the inside when you make the inside and you're looking at the outside when you're going to make the outside. So let's draw that line in again. Let's pull it down so that we're, we got to remember every step is important. Remember to pull that down so you're lining up the, the half inch seam allowance line and the fold line. And uh, over that other scribe tool, it's probably underneath, but now we want to put our reference lines in. We don't need our finish line at the bottom, which means I don't need to run the scribe tool down there and get my finish because I already have it on the other piece. But what I do need is my one inch cut line above my fold line. And that is just a rough cut, a rough, that's why I've just hashed it out, because all this is is just enough material to fold under for that fold line. Okay, so now we've got both of our component pieces. Let me get this back in the pattern. I can move this out of the way. All right, since I'm looking at the outside already, let's go ahead and do the outside. So I go through here, and even though it's just a gradual radius, I still put reliefs in this fold area so we don't get any puckler, puckers or wrinkles or anything in it. Just relieve that all the way through, making sure that you're not cutting through that fold line. Now we fold this over. And 
crimp it down and let's crease it right on that line. I'm just looking right at the line there. And And if, you, if you've uh, seen a bunch of enclosures, you'll see that there's a, there's a million ways to do this stuff. But the way I'm showing you how to do it right here, not the only way to do it. It's not the only way I do it. But what it does is this, it makes this finished on the inside and the outside. And I think that it's pretty easy to do. Might be a lot of steps, but... Okay, so that's on there. Carefully flip that over. That that flipping is kind of a pain in the ass with big paints like this, I have to admit. Sometimes you flip the fabric right off of it and then you wind up messing with it longer. All right, getting it down off the plastic. Let me base this side. And we'll take our inside piece and do the same thing. Relieve it all the way down. Fold it over and let's crease it. I've had people argue with me about the fact that this is not necessary, that you could do straight pieces and, and you, you know, because there's so much stretch in Sunbrella that you can manipulate it into this curved arch. I, I kind of just disagree, I guess. I mean, I, I don't doubt that you can do it, but I think that the, if you make the component piece the shape that the clear is, there's zero room for error. Especially when you go to sew zippers and stuff on it. So I'm lining up my reference lines right there. The more of a curve you have in this stuff, the more important those reference lines are. Right, because if you take the two pieces and try to, you know, put a curve and but have them staggered, then you're going to be you're going to be fighting yourself. So that's what the reference lines are for on the sides. These lines here. All right, so we got that basted down. Let's go sew it. Yeah? Um, hang on. Okay, y'all, what's the date? She went to the doctor's. So no, what's the date today? The 11th. the 11th. We're having a baby. Oh. All right, so I guess she's just going to the hospital for checking stuff, but we're going to be having a baby any second. Hopefully. I'm excited. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to stitch the top of this down. Um, not that necessary. And to be honest with you, I, I do it because it makes it easier to bind it. And, it, and I make sure I can, keep, I can keep the pieces together without uh, twisting or racking. But, I mean, 
if you guys buy solar fixed thread, it's, it's expensive, man. And this is kind of just of a waste of a stitch, but it does help it, I think. Make sure that I'm not gonna miss with the binding. So I hope you guys are enjoying my camera skills. I'm rolling it from that side to that side and back to that side. I'm just being lazy with that camera today. All right, so now I can, now <clears throat> all I'm doing is cutting the outside piece off, right? Now, so now both of those component pieces are exactly the same size. That's why we leave that one long. If you try to make them exactly the same, you'll never, you'll, they'll never be the same. When you go to sew it down. All right, so that is our finished top piece with the exception of binding. Um, I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to go right into doing verticals or let's do the, let's do, let's, let's do the, I'm just going to show you one of the sides because they're both going to be the same. Um, let's do the hard one of the, of the two sides and then we'll go into doing verticals. All right, so <clears throat> this seems to be the more difficult of the two sides simply because of the fact that it's um, bigger, right? It's just bigger. <clears throat> um, one thing that I need to do, I'm looking at here, is I need to take my red shark. See how I've got my, you probably, I don't know if you can see that or not. All right, so here's a, here's a little bit of a lesson. So, on, when I was just looking at this piece, when we started to film that, it just went, everything looks weird to me because I have my red line scribed all the way down and then on the inside I have a snap, which doesn't compute, right? The snap should always be on the outside. So something was weird. I'm, I was missing a mark, and that's the great thing about doing patterns with plastic. So <clears throat> it's real simple. Whenever you get yourself confused, just nest back together what you've cut apart and, and nine times out of 10, it will make a lot of sense. So when I nest this back together, I can see that I just don't have this hash mark. This piece comes in, that's where the zipper stops, and then this is gonna come on down for the, for the doorway right there. So with my black Sharpie, I can indicate on here that that is the bottom. And then this piece is gonna go black down. So so basically the vertical component piece that we put on, we're gonna come up and bind up the fabric itself and then shoot over for on just the, just the vertical component piece, which is what I had planned to do anyways. That way I'm not running a vertical component all the way to the end. I can just reinforce and bind that, blah, 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 blah. You, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get there. So now that I have that indication mark in there, I know what the, the program is with this. So let me move this out of the way again. <clears throat> but just a, just a good tip, and that's, that's why it's so great to pattern with plastic, is now you can do that. So let me take my black sharpie again now the black lines are always going to be your outside right the, the the actual the actual shape of the panel the outside shape of the panel and the red lines are always going to be your just your cut line for your clear so it's pretty easy to keep them from getting confused now here's another this is another another area that's going to be for a bar that's coming through there that we need to notch out on that side and <clears throat> while I have this in this configuration I can go ahead and cut this because I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to lay this pattern back on top once we get the component sewn to the clear so it goes right there and let me indicate that on the inside just a bit so I know I don't lose myself again all right the other thing too that we need to keep in mind is the direction of the weave of the fabric. So it would be really easy to put this, you know, either way. Um, we had to go with the grain on the big piece, so we have to go with the grain on this side because if you stack two pieces up like this, it looks like it's two different colors on the boat. So you don't want that. Um, I don't think that these chunks, that one's definitely not gonna be big enough. We're gonna have to go right to the roll 
to get this to, to weave the proper direction. Yep, definitely gonna have to go with the roll there. <coughs> All right, so I'm not ready for that yet. Let me, uh, let me take my, draw my half inch reference lines for a seam allowance. And here's, God, what was I thinking? What? Line that up. No, that's good. I've got just a, just a tip, maybe a sixteenth of an inch that was off there. I'm not doing it, but it's obviously it's always a lot easier if you put some weight on this thing. It doesn't slide around on you. Okay, so half inch marks are out. And this looks like, let me flip it back around this way. I think that might be bigger than, yeah, it's 35 inches, 34 inches, total length 36 inches. So if we do like a 40, 40 by 40 ish, we can, we'll have enough. So again, you got to remember, let's see here now, that's going to go that way. So let me take a bigger ruler here and a pencil. Go 38 inches, So we also need, which I'm going to save that big long strip for some other stuff. Let me take a piece of this and get our, this way, we get our four inch piece off this side. Actually, I got a bunch of bunch of crooked lines on here. I'm going to have to draw my own line to get it going that way. See, it's about 40 inches right there. Yeah, I'm going to cut two of these out <clears throat> while I've got it because I know I need another one for the other side. All right, so here's our two pieces that we can fold in for the interiors. Move this out of the way again. Okay, so that's going that way. So I'm going to flip this around this way. And I need to sharpen this pencil. All right, so there's our fold for that side. Take and put this to the side.
God, I hate going this direction with this stuff because it's just so stretchy that way. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> these days, the okay, so we're looking at the inside right there. So I need to flip this over, baste it on. And obviously this side's straight, that side's kicking out, right? So let's get more material on that side and this side. Fold it back over. Now, of course, I've got my pattern right in the way, right? Obviously. All right, let's go to the machine and sew this down. And come right back and sew this bottom down that two inch fold. <clears throat> So let's do the same thing here. We've got, we're looking at the inside. Set that down. All right, pencil. Now here is our, here's that funky spot that I was just talking about. First of all, what we can use is this for a reference to cut down with, right? This is a reference right here. Actually, I can bring that all the way down. Right there. And then fill these in. If I can keep my scissors with me, I never seem to be able to do that.
I, <clears throat> I am not going to, this is just a one inch pole that's coming through right there. So you've got this other gap. I'm not going to put any type of flap or anything per request of the customer because he doesn't want to have to flap it to undo two zippers to do the, the doorway. That was a long discussion actually about just a doorway. All right, so bottom's done. Um, this component piece, this, this vertical is going to come all the way down here and then it's going to continue down here. So the aesthetics is the same. This, this vertical is going to come and it's going to stop right there. So we'll run reinforcing the west, rest of the way around for the snaps. Um, let's go into doing the top. <clears throat> I have enough Can I do that okay I don't know if I'm sometimes I get stingy you know and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss that let me do this then let's roll this guy around uh, <clears throat> again any anytime you can get anytime you can get these pieces going this way on the fabric you're better off you're better off because it doesn't stretch as much but we're just gonna we're gonna keep the theme all consistent here so let me rack that around just a bit <clears throat> and I'm on the inside so we're gonna do the inside piece and this is the same process as what we did before hit this pencil real quick So I'm going to scribe in my fold line, then I pull this down to match the seam allowance line, the fold line, <coughs> my scribe tool, reference line, reference line, and then one inch above. Easy peasy, and then one inch below for the cut line. Go ahead and cut your finish line and cut your cut line. All right, so we got our inside piece. Flip this dude around. Do it again for the outside. Pull it down. Reference lines. Move it out of the way. We don't need our finish line. We just need our one inch cut line. Just like that. All right, so we're gonna put baste our inside piece on first. Now, see, this is a pretty tight radius, so I'm putting a bunch. I'm putting a bunch of, of uh, relief cuts in these to make that tight radius. Now we can do the same thing again. Alright. 
Okay, let's baste our outside piece on first. Line our reference lines up. See that? Nice and clean, right? Nice and clean. Flip this over, baste it again. Clean as whistle. Let's go sew it. Go back and sew the outside. I don't know. I might have just lost some film on sewing that because it's too far away for me to read. We're recording now, but I may have just missed that. Nonetheless, I just sewed it down. All right, so let's, uh, damn it. Let's cut this off. Okay, so really nice, well-made, finished off inside and outside top, severely curved component piece. Um, let's jump right into doing um, verticals. I, have, I still haven't done the other side yet, so let me move some of this crap out of the way. Let's jump into doing some verticals for this stuff. <clears throat> and we're getting to the end of what we need to get done, which is good. All right, so 60 inch fabric, that's obviously gonna be enough there. Yeah, I think we're gonna be able to do it, all the verticals out of the width, our 60 inch material. So let me, let me get rid of this. And we know we need, let's see, we need six pieces because there are three verticals. Each one of them are gonna have two components on it. So let me turn this sideways. And again, so we have one and a half, we want a one and a half inch finish. So the math goes like this. If you go one and a half on the inside plus one and a half on the outside, is three plus an inch to fold on one side and an inch to fold on the other side is four or five inches. The, the theory goes that if you fold this stuff three times, you're going to lose maybe a little bit more than a sixteenth, in between a sixteenth of an, and an eighth of an inch in the, the width of that material by doing three different folds. So what I always do is I add a quarter inch to uh, to the width. So if I if it, if the math says I need five inches, I just add it and make it five and a quarter inches, and that that will compensate for folding that fabric over, so that you don't make the panel too small. And we need what do we say? We need six of these, right? So five and a quarter and five and a quarter is eleven and a half, and that's how usually how I mark that out. I just mark eleven and a half, and then I just move it up. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ten and a half. I do it's eleven, ten and a half. It's five and a quarter and ten and a half and then you go five and a quarter ten and a half and then we say five and a quarter ten and a half and that's our six pieces let's do that again over here All right, now we take our six foot two inch rule and we need <coughs> a two inch line 
on the top and bottom of every one of these pieces. Pencils are going quick today. All right, so now I have six pieces, and each one of them have a line scribed two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom, which means I can just come right into doing my folding, my creasing and my folding. So I'm going to crease, and I'm going to fold these down. I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to shut this camera off here in a second. So and then I'll flip it around, and I'm going to scribe the... Or, uh, uh, squeegee down the size. I'm going to squeegee all of them and then we'll go to the machine and start to sew them. Alright, so now I've got both sides creased in. See that, how they crease in? So I'm going to hold them in there. That's why creasing it makes, you can do it without creasing it, but it's a lot harder. And then I'm going to fold it in half and make sure that the two edges line up. And now I'm not, I'm, I'm not sewing it closed, I'm sewing the back side of it, right? And again, this goes pretty quick once you get the hang of doing it. You just kind of crease it again with your thumb. All right, so then that makes a one and a half inch component. So let me go through and I'll sew the rest of these and then we'll baste them on there. All righty, so now we got all of our pieces made and this was that weird section where this is going to stop in the middle of this so these are really easy to do but I do need a ruler here so I'm going to take oh let me pause oh there it is right there I thought I was out of quarter inch tape I like to do this with quarter inch tape that way you can make sure that when you base this on here that the tape doesn't stick out and you never see it because that stuff gets all gooey and then it makes a mess for the future so um, you just simply pull these down and this one happens to be stopping right there <clears throat> Okay, so here's what I like to do. I like to make sure, I'm going to line that up at the bottom there. I like to make sure that these things are straight. You know, you got to remember that you're drawing a line with a, with a protractor, but you're also cutting a, cutting a line by hand. And if you want your zippers to be straight, you need to make sure that you've got a, a good straight edge that you're lining these up to. And trust me when I say this, I do this when I put every single one of those on there all the time to make sure they're straight. Um, because that's what puts wrinkles in it, right? If you have 
two curved pieces and then you zip them flat, you're going to have wrinkles in the pattern or in the, in the clear. So getting these verticals perfectly straight helps prevent getting uh, um, wrinkles. So keep that in mind. So let's go. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the, put the ruler on and baste every single one. Well, I'm going to baste it, sew it, and then do each one of these. Um, so it's pretty brainless. I mean, there, there's nothing more to it than that. Just make sure that you use a, uh, a straight edge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish up putting all, all the verticals on, but I got to also build the other panel and then we'll come back for binding and then doing some zippers and then this thing will be done.